A new crypto mining botnet is targeting both Windows and Linux. We'll give you the details. So, Matt, I heard you have something to discuss related to uh, crypto mining. Would you like to go into details? I would love to go into details, Tony. So this is uh, based on a blog post that Juniper put out uh, on something that is called SciServe or SYSRV. I'm going to call it SciServe. Um, and this is a, a crypto mining botnet. It's started off. It's, it's interesting because they, they give you a little bit of the story uh, of the evolution of the botnet. And uh, in the very beginning, uh, SciServe was two components. It was the worm component, which was one binary, and the crypto mining component, which was a second binary. And so they sort of came along with each other. And you know, the, the worm would scan, it would exploit the box, it would push a, a loader shell, you know, dot sh or dot ps1 based on whether it was Linux or Windows, and then load up the crypto miner and start mining to a mining pool, which is a way of sort of uh, concentrating uh, mining effort. And I think. The more participants you have in a pool that are all contributing, uh, the bigger the payouts eventually are for every contributor. I'm not an expert on that, but if you are interested in it, definitely go go start looking at uh, what a crypto mining pool is. It's it's all fascinating stuff. So uh, again, this is a 64-bit uh, binary. It's written in Go. Uh, it's packed with UPX, which is relatively trivial to unpack, uh, so not super hard to to get past the obfuscation on it. Uh, and like I said before, it runs on Windows and Linux. So that's the original version. By March, they've combined uh, both binaries into one, and they've got a number of different remote control execution bugs and a number of, of different software suites that you've you probably heard of. Plus, it also tries to brute force into WordPress boxes. It also adds SSH keys to the host, so as a way to sort of get back in sort of persistence in case something happens to it, which is, you know, clever. Uh, I believe the latest version has 12 vulnerabilities that it scans for, and they've changed up their mining pools. So the, the Juniper block has a bunch of really good details if you want to take a look at it, and if you are concerned about this affecting your boxes. Uh, some of these are services that I would expect to be internet-facing. Some of them, really not so much, uh, but it is worth looking at. So the, the short version of all this is there's a botnet out there. It's compromising both Windows and Linux hosts. It's got separate you know, binaries for each. And it's going to try and use your stuff for spreading itself and also for mining cryptocurrency, in particular Monero. Um, so if you find your machine has been infected, uh, it's probably best to rebuild from a known good state. But if you can't do that, um, definitely take a look at the article, understand everything that it does to the system, in particular, get rid of those SSH keys because it'll just come right back in if you aren't careful. Yeah, so Matt, I know it was, uh, you say affect both Windows and Linux, right? So is that anything against Windows and Linux or, or in general, or is it maybe some of the vulnerabilities on some of those apps that are running within Windows and Linux? It's the vulnerabilities within the apps. That's where the weakness lies. Uh, Linux and Windows themselves don't have, uh, the, the, this botnet is not exploiting any vulnerabilities inherent to either of those operating systems. That there's just payloads for both Windows and Linux once the exploitation occurs. Gotcha, yeah, because I know there were, it seemed like there was a little discussion on that and there's some confusion on that. So, yeah, so that's kind of what I was wanting to clear that up. And then I guess now that, you know, it's I guess it's the sole focus now is, you know, it's crypto mining, but I guess it could be tailored later to be as an additional malware dropper or something like that, not just necessarily, uh, you know, crypto mining current as it seems like it currently is standing, you know, or, or uh, functioning. That's absolutely possible. Yeah, and these guys did... Um, I think it might have been easier for them to do that in the original version when you had a separate com um, a worm component and a payload component, but now right. it looks like uh, it's all baked into one thing. So these guys seem to have, at least for the time being, dedicated the botnet for crypto mining. Now they can always add more code and um, who knows, they can make it modular. We've seen other sorts of uh, expansion of, uh, of the functions of malware in the past, but right now it does look like they've hitched their wagon to the crypto mining uh, right. objective. This, I would take the assumption that a, a majority, if not all of this, is actually done through scanning. So with the, uh, the vulnerabilities that, that you just discussed, uh, we can break down what ports that they would be listening on for Internet-facing systems and then kind of look there to see what sort of probing would be happening 
from an you know um, a perimeter perspective, from a, a security perspective, is that is that an accurate statement? That's accurate. Yep. All of the propagation of this is being done through network scanning and then exploitation of exposed network services. And it, it sounds like from what what you started off with this um, this topic, this isn't the first iteration. So perhaps we would expect that later on this year they would up update their app list, they would, you know, maybe do other items outside of uh, crypto mining, but it, it sounds like it's a pretty set, set botnet right now. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think they're going to try and push more into the, the scanning and exploiting section because the payload is always going to be the same. It's going to be a crypto miner. It's going to be configured to mine to one of the pools that they know about. So I think that the where they're going to innovate is probably going to be around the different vulnerabilities as those come out. And these are not necessarily new vulnerabilities. I'm looking at the list here, and only one of them has a CVE number from 2021, and I'm only seeing one CVE number from 2020. The rest are 2019 and 2017. So some of them don't actually have CVEs either. Um, you might consider those potentially uh, new ones if they get assigned in 2021. Um, but they're not, they're not using zero days here. They're using known vulnerabilities uh, or ones that are at least documented in some way or brute force just to get um, into the server for, from there uh, they can use the services available in, in WordPress and Jenkins which I didn't mention before uh, to just get their own code running.